Content creation just changed big time. Ayo, who took ease? Andy Lippy here, and oh my days, this is incredible news. This is gonna completely change how you make content, putting your voice out into the world. So all the big creators keep telling you, you need to make content on different platforms if you wanna grow, if you wanna create an audience, if you wanna do and be successful in the streaming world or content creation world in that fact. Well now, with this tool, you can literally put all your eggs in one basket to then throw them into different baskets. Honestly, mind blowing. We are gonna be looking at the brand new OBS plugin from the team over at Atom that basically allows you to have two canvases in OBS. One landscape, one portrait, and it is so easy. And a cheeky little one, it's got some fella's name stamped all over it. Don't forget, obviously, if this video is helping you out and you like my content, then make sure you are subscribed and also like it so I can keep doing this daily to give you the best streaming tips possible, okay? So if you wanna get your hands on this, we just need to get it from the Atom website. All the links are in the description. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see the plugin download. You can also download it from GitHub as well. Download the installer and, whoa, that's the pretty face that I was telling you about it. Another Exceldro absolute goodness. Beautiful. What a man. You guys that already are big on this channel know how much I love Exceldro. So, you know this is a quality product from that name. Just run that installer, choose your OBS location, and then voila, it's installed, ready to go. If you guys are technical and do the portable mode and everything like that, I will also leave the GitHub link below so you can copy the, the normal files and do your portable mode installs. Don't worry, I've got your back, all right? Now, when we jump into OBS, we will see a few differences. We have on the right hand side, a vertical dock. This is basically our canvas for everything that we want to send out to TikTok or make clips, do whatever we want with it. And we also have a separate vertical scenes and vertical sources dock, which is pretty handy. These are actually separate to your normal scenes and sources as well, even though a cool thing that you can do is these are docks. So you could dock them both together and switch between your vertical scenes and your normal scenes, which is pretty nice. So right now in OBS, I've got my gaming scene, which I'm using Silverlink's gameplay because I ain't got time to play any game because I'm busy making this content for you guys. So if you can, take a second, press that subscribe button and like this video as it makes a huge difference to me. Uh, come on, I'm sacrificing my game time for you. So I've got a just chatting scene and a normal gaming scene. I don't want to start posting stuff and recording funny clips that I could post out to TikTok because that is the best way to grow as a streamer and content creator being on more platforms. So I've got a vertical scene one just here and I'm going to start adding some sources in. So I press the plus sign and I'm going to go to, I'm choosing a browser source because that's how, where I'm getting Silverlink's gameplay from. So I'm going to open that up and you can see straight away it adds it into this vertical canvas. Obviously it can be a little bit daunting to work with but because it's a dock you can resize it. So you can find access to all of the canvas a lot easier. So I'm going to make this bigger. I'll make it directly in the middle. Make sure I've got enough room either side. I want to put my cam on there as well. Guess how I do that? I go down to sources again in the bottom right, press the plus sign, go on up to video capture device and press webcam and add it in that way. I'm going to start resizing it again as we did before, get it to somewhere that I'm happy and that's it. I've got two different scenes now. I've got one inside my main OBS canvas, which is my one that I'm gonna send out to Twitch. And then I've got another one that I can send out somewhere else or record clips of something that happens. The great thing is you can add as many different scenes as you want. So if I want to do a just chatting scene, for instance, so I've got my just chatting scene here, but I wanna make one in vertical form as well. I just add a new scene, give it a name, I'm going to call it just chat in vertical, zoom out, and I've got it just here. I'm going to add it in my source, which is my video capture device, and I'm going to go and put me directly there. Now I've got two scenes. So I've got my gameplay scene just there, and I've got a just chatting scene, which is just there. And as you can see, changing it is a little bit janky, right? No, they got the solution for this as well. I right click on whichever scene that I want to tie to another scene. So I'm gonna choose this one, go to link scenes and press just chat in main. So this just chatting scene is linked 
to this just chatting scene. So anytime I change to this scene, it will turn it on and vice versa. So if I go back to my gameplay scene, this one is already linked up as you can see. And I go back to just chatting, it automatically changes it. I don't have to worry about maintaining two different streams or anything like that. I can just literally change scene using whatever bot or using my stream deck or something like that and it will literally change at the same time, which is so cool. So the key thing I was talking about there is stream. We can actually not only record gameplay with this, but we can also stream as well. So if you're lucky enough to have a thousand followers on TikTok, for instance, you can start live streaming. I'm currently on just short of 500. So make sure you do follow me on TikTok because I'm doing lots of short form content that's gonna help you up your game when making the best stream possible. So I'll leave a link in the description to that. So we've got three buttons just here. We've got a go live. So stream vertical, record vertical, and backtrack click vertical. I can't even say that. <sighs> say that three times fast and let me know how you do, right? Backtrack clip vertical. Backtrack clip. And now nah, it's not happening. It's not happening. It's not happening. And basically what backtrack is, is like the old replay buffer. When, when, when we say old, it's not old. It's still it's literally right there. I don't know why I said old. Uh, it's literally like replay buffer, but they just changed the name to make it make a little bit more sense, which I, I completely agree with. So we can record X amount of seconds in the past. So let's have a little look at some of these settings. So if I press this little cogwheel down here, we can change our resolution. So since you're doing vertical content on a phone, you don't really need the craziest resolution, right? I reckon 720 will be perfectly fine. You can change it to 1080 as well. It's completely up to you guys. You have got um, show vertical scenes in main scene list. So if I check that, it will put all the scenes down there so I can actually see them all because they just act like normal scenes. Uh, we can change the video bit rate, audio bit rate, all that jazz. And we've got backtrack as well. So backtrack runs while streaming and recording. Anytime we go live, we can automatically have backtrack working. So we can press the button and it will give us that replay, which is nice. How long we want it to um, give us. So a nice spot is usually between a minute and two minutes. So 60 and 120 seconds. Anytime we press the button or hotkey, which we can set just here, it will record the last 60 to 120 seconds. Make sure you do that, it's so good. We can obviously change whatever recording path we want. We also have other recording settings for hotkeys as well. So if we just want to record a set portion, say for instance, when I'm doing tutorials live on Twitch, I press a record button and it records set sources so I'm ready to go. This will make it a lot easier so I can just literally post something to TikTok as well, which is really nice. And we've also got streaming. So like I said, if you are a TikTok streamer, you can literally put your key in here, start streaming away to TikTok, and you can do it at the same time as Twitch because it's not against their TOS. They did open that up and allow you to do that. So get your face in more places, reach more people, right? That's the best thing to do, do it, yeah, do it. And last but not least, there is the Atom button just here. So if you did wanna go and try Atom out, it's another similar tool that will make streaming a lot easier with different interactions and stuff like that you can definitely do go check that out and have a free trial which is nice something to note you can still use all the plugins and everything to control your sources which is really nice and all of the different tools out there so as well as atom you've got streamer but you've got sammy you can still use them to control all of these this other canvas which is nice so if i right click on scene one here go to filters and i'll add in a move source filter another great plugin by exceldro and i'm going to choose the webcam and i want to zoom in on the webcam when something happens for instance i can press all the settings that i want get it all set up so i want it in this position which is this reset position i'm going to go bigger like this, so you can see what I really want to look at, right? Obviously, and yes, he is real. I'm going to duplicate this source, and I'm going to get the new transformer of this webcam, like so. And then now, when something cool happens, I can still zoom in on that canvas in there. We can then set that up in whatever bot that you use. So I use Streamerbot a lot, so I can do a test just here and set up a command and we'll go to OBS. Then I'll go across to scenes and then I can choose set scene filter state and it'll come up vertical scene one just here. You can see all four of the scenes. So I can open vertical scene one and we added move source and move source two. So I'll change the move source two. I'll wait five seconds and then we will do the exact same thing but we'll go back to move 
source one. And now when I run that command, we'll zoom in. Oh, he's waking up. And then it'll come back out as well. Like so. So it's still compatible with all of your setup now. Something I would like to mention is I actually had issues installing this into OBS just due to it having a conflict with scene tree. So if anybody's using scene tree uh, OBS plugin, it will make OBS unusable. I have actually submitted a bug report or I'm about to submit a bug report to see if we can get an update in scene tree to, to make that work with this. That'd be really nice. So if you're wanting to remove uh, scene tree so you can use this, go to C drive. It's usually in program files or program files 86, OBS-Studio, then go OBS plugin, 64-bit, and a little bit further down, we should see uh, OBS scene tree view. Literally, just delete that and then you'll be good to go. OBS will open and all will be well. I think we can all agree this is gonna be a game changer for putting your content out into the wild and hopefully getting yourself a bigger following. I would love to know what your thoughts are, so let me know in the comments down below, all right? Feels weird recording in, in my old setup. My phone was dead, so I couldn't record the video, right? That was oh, such a shame. But if you wanna learn some more, go click on this video just here. And if you need any other support, let me know in the comments. All that jazz, all right? Like the video, subscribe, and put your rock in for the stone.